So D3, or D23, I should say, not D3, but D23, uh, began this weekend. It continues today and I think even tomorrow. Uh, I think they have this, they have a Marvel animation panel today, and then they have a, um, I, I'm guessing, a Fox panel. They have like two panels, uh, two or three panels, I think, a day. And um, yesterday was their um, beginning. And what's unique about D23 this year is instead of having it at a convention center in Anaheim or in the Los Angeles area, uh, they decided to go to the Honda Center, which is home to the Anaheim Ducks, or formerly the Anaheim Mighty Ducks, um, you know, some time ago of the NHL, and potentially could be home to a future NBA expansion team or WNBA expansion team, we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, they went there, and even pe- and even folks like John Campia, who did a live reaction along with his brother-in-law and you know the co- and the friend on the John Campia show, uh, even he was impressed by this because he's been pretty much very um, outspoken, you know, about San Diego Comic Con leaving the convention center that they're at. And going someplace else, like even like Petco Park or, or something like that, because you know if you're gonna have Hall H be a, you know like your massive uh, attraction, then you have to have it in a bigger platform for everybody to see that wants to see that you know specifically when they go to SDCC. But yeah, D23 happened, and some of the things that came out of it. Um, were uh were interesting were expected and surprising um as well and i've got tons of notes if that printed out information here courtesy of ign so i'm not going to go too much over it i'm just going to talk about some of it as best i can so they started off by uh showing the new disney logo and everything but also what they did uh you know for the first true presentation like you know of what's to come uh, they basically uh, showed off a new trailer, which went online instantly for uh, for Moana 2. And we see in the trailer, as well as we get more information, uh, we we see uh, Moana's little sister. She's in this. She's being introduced uh, in this. She's a she's a little sister, younger than Moana. Moana is the chief of her, or at least the yeah, chief leader of her people now. And everything she's accepted that role and, and all that and now she's going on a journey to uh, see if there's more of the more of her people out there uh, and everything and, and that's according to what the synopsis says you know it says the trailer reveals new threats and familiar faces and um, basically uh, it's going to be um, it says Moana, the trailer, the new trailer sees Moana looking to reteam with Maui, voiced by Dwayne Johnson. Uh, when a new stormy threat threatens uh, the life she's built with her family. Um, basically, it's, uh, I'm trying to look at some more information. They had the voice actress for Moana and Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, there uh, uh, to take part in like a little dance and sing along, if you know, a musical number. Um, basically, it states that Moana is the leader of the land and the sea, basically the chief. Um, and it's more ex- more exciting, she is a big sister. Her sister is her entire world. When she is not with her, uh, when she is not with her sister, she is looking for evidence that there are more people beyond where she has sailed. And the new trailer kind of gives you that, that vibe as well, so... It looks really good for, for something that was originally, or the movie, I should say, looks really good for something originally meant to be on Disney+. Plus. Then they talked about, um, speaking of The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, they talked about him partnering with Disney for a Monster Truck, Monster Truck Jam uh, project, a live-action movie. Uh, they showed the, um, they showed uh, the top, they showed the, uh, I guess you could say the poster for that as well, like a little montage of Monster Truck. And everything and um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do there they showed off concept art as well as uh, the title for avatar 3 it'll be avatar uh, fire and ash 
James Cameron came out to talk about that um, as well. Uh, and it will come out on uh, December 19th, 2025. Well, Moana, Moana 2 will come out on uh, the 27th, November 27th of this year. And, they, and that's the other thing, too. They did kind of give you some release dates, at least projected uh, release dates and, and everything um, for... I was saying, um, trying to find where I was last, sorry, the, um, the cooler went on, it usually we saw a while up and everything, but anyway, uh, like I was saying, I think I'm trying to find what I'm on here, okay, uh, yeah, here we go, um, but anyway, like I was saying, uh, James Cameron came out, um, on stage and he showed some concept art, uh, for Avatar 3, which is titled Avatar of uh, Fire and Ash, and that is scheduled uh, to come out on, uh, basically, it's scheduled to come out um, on December 19th, 2025. Well, Moana comes out on November 27th of this year. So, that's pretty good. And it looks, from the concept art, it looks really nice, Avatar 3. I have to get, I still have to get Way of Water um, on Blu-ray 4K, eventually I'll get that very soon, get my unemployment this week, I might do that, uh, maybe. Uh, then they did a little bit of a Pix Pixar presentation, uh, they talked about uh, did the new Disney Plus series called Dream Productions, which, you know, ties in with uh, Inside Out 1 and 2, it takes place actually in between Inside Out 1 and 2, that being Dream Productions, it's based on the little dream studio within Riley's mind, you know, where all her dreams, you know, like become fantasy, you know, fantasies, you know, become reality in her mind, in her dreams, if you will. And uh, then they also showed a trait, and they showed the title logo for what that looks like, at least the working title logo. Then they showed a trailer for Win or Lose, which they did, you know, talk about there, and they put the trailer out publicly um, as well. And then they talked about toys. Uh, they talked about Toy Story Five. That's right, Toy Story Five. Uh, it's going to be written and directed by Andrew Stanton and everything. And uh, basically, it's going to be a continuation, of course, of Toy Story Four. But what's interesting is you have Woody uh, in the little teaser that they put out, the little animated teaser. Uh, with him and Buzz and Jesse and the aliens, you know, a little crane pulling up the Toy Story 5 uh, logo. And but when, and what's interesting, though, and this has got people talking, it's like, how is really a part of this when the last time we saw Woody at the end of Toy Story 4, he was with Bo Beep going to help other toys, you know, does that tie into this? Does, you know, does Bo Beep and Woody become part of, you know, a little group where they go on missions and work with other toys, you know, to, um, I guess, you know, find a purpose or try to connect with their owners. And you have to wonder if maybe if that might, if that's the case, this is speculation on my part, if, you know, one of the missions is going to lead them back to Bonnie's. And um, what's interesting about this is you got not one but two villains. Uh, the first villain is a, you know, a group, and they showed this on screen at D23, a group of, uh, you know, 50 or more malfunctioning, uh, recalled Buzz Lightyears. You know, we got an idea, we, we pretty much had an idea given to us that there were more than just one Buzz Lightyear toy, uh, than the one we know. So apparently we're going to have some malfunctioning recalled ones as the villains, uh, that they have to encounter. As well as another villain is going to be uh, present, but it's going to be more of a, you know, a, more of a villain that's basically going to, you know, you know, threaten to take away, you know, Bonnie, if you will, and that is electronics like, you know, a, like, you know, iPhones, Android phones, iPads, you know, tablets, you name it, and there is concept out of the toys at the edge of Bonnie's bed, and she's under the covers. Of her, of her bed, and she's, you know, looking at a tablet, so that's another villain 
as well. Again, how Woody gets involved, again, it's up to speculation. My assumption is since him and Bonnie, uh, since not Bonnie, but him and Bo Peep are about helping other toys, you know, connect with humans and stuff like that. I think that might be where he, this, you know, he makes his return or how he makes his return. And that is scheduled, apparently, to come out, I think, in 2026, I believe. I think that is when it's scheduled to come out. Yeah, summer of 2026. And they showed a little teaser trailer, like I said, but just the logo being revealed via crane with the aliens. And then, of course, you had Woody, Jesse, and, and Buzz. Uh, the other Pixar story they talked about, uh, Pixar um, news that they talked about was Hoppers. It stars John Hamm and Bobby Morima. Morima, I can pronounce it. And it's scheduled to come out uh, in theaters in 2026 as well. It's an all-new original story. And uh, basically the story is uh, a young girl uh, transfers her mind into a robot uh, a, a beaver, I think. I'm trying to make a robot beaver or something like that. You know, I'm trying to I think that's where it is a robot beaver or something like that to help save the beavers in their home. So that's going to be interesting. Something tells me, even though it's an all new original film and idea, that its story is going to be, you know, where she transfers her mind into this robot beaver. But maybe she'll start having conflicts like maybe this is what she's meant to be or who she's meant to be now. Maybe she's not meant to be a, a young woman or a young girl. She's meant to be a beaver. Maybe that might be what they do. But that comes out in 2026. Uh, they did talk about Elo. Um, uh, Elo that we did, you know, which we did kind of get like a little teaser the year prior. That's coming out June of next year. Uh, and it has though and it's added though. Saladin, uh, Saladin, um, as part of the cast, Zoe Saladin, uh, for any MLP fans out there, she voiced the uh, captain character of the uh, Pirates in the MLP 2017 movie, so that's a good casting call, and, uh, you know, and, you know, so that's, you know, so that's a, uh, I'm trying to find the right words to say. Got, I almost lost my train of thought there. I'm trying to do this before my mom officially wakes up and everything. Uh, but anyway, um, but yeah, uh, they've added her. And like I was saying, for anybody that watched the 2017 MLP movie, Zoe Saladin, she did, she voiced the captain of the pirates and everything. So there you go. The ones that Rainbow Dash befriended. Um, excuse me. And then, if that's not enough, they had uh, the voice actor of Anger, voicing Anger, uh, show up on screen and have a big smile on his face, face and said, and say the say something along the lines of, "Did he say incredible?" And that's when you had ba uh, Brad Bird come out, and we get the logo officially for um, Incredibles three. That's right, Incredibles three. Um, is officially in the works at Pixar, and you know this is a big surprise, a, a welcome surprise, because a lot of fans, you know, they will be, they've always been wondering after the first Incredibles will we get a second one? We did, but it took like 15, 16 years. Now we're getting one a lot sooner. What kind of throws some people off, like John Campion and his crew, is it says on uh, on social media that it's coming soon. Does that mean it's coming within the next year? Is it, what, what does that mean? My assumption is we're looking at 2026, maybe 2027, maybe late 2025 at the earliest. So late 2025 at the earliest, 2027 at the latest, in my opinion. But yeah, Incredibles 3 is happening. The question is, what will the plot be about? Will the kids be aged up? What is going on? Because you know that the uh, people that voice... Um, Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible, you know, Craig T. Nelson, I think Helen Hunt, uh, they're getting a little older, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how they, you know, you know, work around that, but I think they'll find a way to work around that and, you know, come up with a story that might focus more on the kids this time, aged up, uh, than anything else. But yeah, they're working on that, Incredibles 3. And then they showed a clip from Zootopia 2. Uh, with the reveal that 
Ki Hu Kwan is going to be voicing a snake called Gary. I don't know if this Gary character is going to be the villain, or he might be associated with the villain, but if he's a snake, then that's going to make some interesting dynamics, because you have Judy, who's a rabbit, and what is the one common prey that, you know, predators like snakes like to try to eat? Rabbits. So it would be interesting to see what happens there, especially with uh, the possibility of what the story is going to evolve from what we understand. And uh, Zootopia is going to be coming out next year. I think they have a release date here. Yeah, they do. Zootopia will be coming out um, on November 26, 2025. And so it's going to be inter so it's going to be you know a, a little longer to a little bit of a longer wait well not a long wait but still it's going to be you know a wait for everybody but as soon as that first trailer comes out i've got a feeling around super bowl like a teaser if you will yeah people are going to be excited but yeah it's going to be uh, interesting you know it's going to be interesting and everything uh when this happens uh, according to this, they said Zootopia 2 footage was unleashed on D23. Attendees revealing Gary Viper, played by Everything Everywhere Everything Everywhere All at Once star Q Hu Kwan, in a semi-aquatic area called Marsh Market. Judy Hobbs and Nick Wilde go on their next adventure when the sequel arrives in theaters November 26, 2025. So that's pretty good. Then, they talked about Frozen 3. And it reveals first look in the concept art for Frozen 3. People um, compared it to being, you know, the concept art and, and everything being very Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty inspired. Uh, but they did reveal that Frozen 3 will hit theaters in 2027. They didn't say, you know, what date in 2027, but it will be 2027. My assumption is either the summer of 2027 or holiday season 2027. And they also did hint at the fact that they are working on a fourth installment for uh, Frozen. So, you know, you got that to look forward to as well. They also showed the logo for Frozen 3. Pretty much everybody assumed what the logo was going to look like. And I think a lot of people were spot on about it. Uh, but like I said, they also hinted at a Frozen 4. So I've got a feeling that Frozen 4 might come either at the end of this decade or at the start of, of the 2030s decade. That's my assumption. Uh, they did announce as well that Frozen, Hercules, and The Greatest Showman are going to get stage adaptions, you know, on, Disney, on, on Broadway Disney. So that's pretty good. And that also the Frozen musical uh, featuring, Samantha, uh, featuring Samantha Banks uh, as Elsa will be filmed live on stage and will be coming to Disney Plus in 2025. So you will be getting, so we will be getting a special um, live in concert kind of uh, event with with, uh, with Frozen the musical being presented, you know, as you see it on Broadway, but now on Disney Plus. I've got a feeling it also might show up on ABC along the way as part of the wonderful world of Disney. But yeah, Frozen and Hercules are going to get stage adaptions. Hercules already has one, I think, in Greece or in Greek, uh, uh, not Greece, but Germany or wherever it is. They do have one uh, in another part of the world. I think it's uh, Germany, Hamburg, Germany. So now they're going to be bringing it over here. So that's pretty good. So And The Greatest Showman, basically, that's a musical right off the bat. Easy adaptation. Can't wait to see what it will look like on Broadway, Disney on Broadway. Um, they did uh, show a short trailer and teaser trailer, and they did give a release date for Star Wars Skeleton Crew, which a lot of people are saying, well, some people are saying, is pretty much Goonies in space, or the Star Wars equivalent of the Goonies, because it's an all-teenage kid crew, um, if you will, it's an all-teenage kid crew, and it's coming to Disney+, Plus with a two-episode premiere, on December 3rd of this year. So yeah, that's something to look forward to. And then they um, talked about season two of Andor. They showed footage for that. And it says, look, it shows the first look at familiar Star Wars faces, including Forrest Whitaker, 
and it makes its return in 20, uh, uh, hold on, I think they give a date, I don't know if they, did they give a date, no they didn't, they didn't give a date, uh, but they said that Andor, uh, is going to be coming to the big screens sometime next year, season two that is, and, um, basically it's going to be a four year story in season two, that's pretty much a four year timeline, uh, will be taking place in season two, uh, and everything, and involve appearances from, um, you know, well, appearances from Cassin Adore's droid companion, K-280, in the Empire's aspir right, aspirational director, Kinnick. So, yeah, Andor Season 2 is coming next year, and Season 2 is going to take place over a four-year timeline. That would be interesting to see how they do that. Then they said that, then they said that something else is coming, and that is Star Wars back on the big screen. But it will be the Mandalorian and Grogu, or Grogu movie. They showed footage of it, featuring a new outfit for the everyone's favorite little green alien. But yeah, it's the Mandalorian and Grogu. That's the Star Wars movie uh, that is coming out, and it's coming out. Um, in well, not next year, but it's coming out in uh, tw on May twenty second, twenty twenty six, and it began filming just a few weeks ago. So, yeah, it's going to be in so that's going to be fun to see. Basically, it's a continuation, a big screen continuation of the Mandalorian, but it's called Mandalorian and Grogu. So it's going to be in so that will be if you're a Star Wars fan and you like the Mandalorian, that'll be something to look forward to in twenty twenty six. Then they, then they went to Marvel, and Marvel showed off Ironheart with a, fir with a first look video, which is pretty cool. And everything, it's a first look video. And uh, they said Black Panther veteran Ryan Krug uh, uh, Krugler took the stage to talk about how he's involved with the, uh, how he's involved of, the, okay, they said a Black Panther veteran, Ryan Krugler, took the stage at D23 to talk about how he's involved. What's next for Reen Williams, a.k.a. Einhardt, following her debut in Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever. New footage uh, of, the Disney Plus show, of the Disney Plus show sees Rhea, I think, uh, uh, Rhea, I think, I'm trying to read it here, uh, Rhea, Keeping up at MIT while worrying about a new superpowered villain played by Hamilton actor Anthony Ramos. Ironheart premieres next year. They don't give a date just yet. Then they talk about the pun they talk about Daredevil Born Again, which will premiere in March of next year. It states that Matt Murdock suits up to take on the Kingpin and the Punisher in the new in the new Daredevil Born Again video. Uh, March and it's again revealed to have a March. 2025 uh, premiere and also it hints that Daredevil will team up with the Kingpin to take on an even bigger threat so and this is the information they said Daredevil born again has big shoes to fill so Disney took the time to give fans an early look so they can see how it's shaping up for themselves Charlie Cox Vincent uh, Delafino and John Brunto all showed up to reveal footage of Daredevil cleaning up the streets of New York. The Devil of Hell's Kitchen will have to get his hands dirty when dealing with the Punisher and Kingpin yet again and when season one comes to Disney Plus March 2025. Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige also teased that team uh, that team at Marvel is ready to get back to work on season two very soon. So in other words, they're going to do back-to-back -back seasons for Daredevil Born Again. So uh, that's interesting to, to see. Uh, then they did, then they had the cast for Agatha all along come on stage and perform a musical number. It's the same musical number that I think they're going to be performing uh, in the show. And they showed a new trailer, which did premiere online. Uh, give you better, give you more of a better idea of what's to come. How it basically um, continues after not just WandaVision, but Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. 
and uh, yeah, it looks really good, and it's going to be debuting uh, September 18th, 2024, with a two-episode uh, premiere. And this is this this is what it says. One division made big waves. This is the synopsis, or at least the quote they gave us. They said one division made big waves in the MCU, but Agatha was the one. Uh, but Agatha was the one who was a hit, or was hit the hardest when the show came to a close. The cast from the Disney uh, the Disney Plus spinoff showed uh, the spinoff show materialized at D23 to reveal a new trailer for the show that features more Catherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza as they deal with the fallout of the Scarlet Witch. The new trailer also, uh, the, well, they basically say the new trailer, they, uh, I printed this out, so basically um, they gave you a link on IGN to see the trailer and everything, but yeah, September 18th, two episode premiere is when it's going to be coming uh, this year, September 18th, two episode premiere on Disney+. Plus. Then they showed a video, a video teases, a sea of monster storyline for Percy Jackson season two. Let's get into Percy Jackson. That's going to be interesting. This is Disney Plus subscribers got a nice surprise when per, with Percy Jackson season one. And Disney says season two will keep its adaptation going with a new storyline based on the second book in the series, Sea of Monsters. The cast of the show did reveal a short teaser for the next batch of episodes. You can watch it above. Again, I printed this out, so you can't you know, really watch it if it's on paper. <laughs> Though we are still waiting on a release date. So season two is coming. It's based on the Sea of Monsters uh, book. And it is coming possibly next year at the latest, if I was to say, if I was to make a guess. Um, then they had uh, David Blaine, Master Magician, appear. Uh, with Do Not Attempt. It says, Will renowned magician David Blaine worked his magic at D23 to reveal that his next trick is a National Geographic show called David Blaine Do Not Attempt. They showed a trailer for the project, which is set to come to National Geographic as well as Hulu and Disney Plus. Shows Blaine exploring the globe while performing extraordinary stunts. It looks dangerous and it's coming next year, 2025. Then they talked about Freaky Friday 2. They revealed images and a new title, and the new title for Freaky Friday 2 is Freakier Friday. That's right, and it's going to have Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan return uh, for the story. And according to this, it says Lindsay Lohan and James, uh, Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis are back for the body swapping sequel Freakier Friday. The pair reunited on stage to show off the longer way to film's new title as well as a handful of early pictures from the movie. Uh, see, Le, see, see Lohan and Curtis tampering with powers um, beyond the control once again when Freakier Fry, Friday releases next year. So yeah, basically it's going to be another body swapping situation between them, but it's also going to be involving some body swapping with um, Lindsay's character, who's the daughter of Jamie Lee Curtis in the first film. You're going to have Lindsay's kids, I think, swapping as well. We'll have to see. And then they gave us a first look at live action st uh, Stitch, which is a CGI Stitch, very well done CGI Stitch, uh, from the upcoming Lilo and Stitch movie. Uh, he, they had him burst through. Basically, they had the, uh, for those that were there, they had the screen kind of glitch out, out when it was on the, you know, like the, you know, the do, 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 do kind of thing, you know, from when Disney movies start. And everything, you know, they had the current modern logo, but all of a sudden they had a glitch and, you know, out popped uh, the CGI stitch. Then they put it online, but it wasn't, you know, exactly as you saw it at D23. Instead, they had the Lilo and Stitch uh, logo poster, and then they had, you know, Stitch pop out of that. It's the same person that voiced him in the animated film in the series. That's pretty cool. It says, Disney is pushing forward with more live action adaptations of beloved of uh, Disney classics and Lilo and Stitch seems to be maintaining Stitch's puppy-like appearance while giving him some furry new details. No other information about the film was revealed, but this is easily our best look at the project yet. Expect to see everyone's favorite little blue troublemaker take over Hawaii when the live-action Lilo and Stitch movie crashes into theaters summer of next year. Now, they didn't give a release date for the summer of next year, but it's coming next year. 
Then they did reveal and they did post it online. The first teaser trailer for the live action Snow White with Rachel Zegler, uh, Rachel uh, Zegler, uh, Ziegler, Rachel Ziegler, and the Seven Dwarfs. And from what I've seen, and even people like um, even people like uh, John Campia has seen, it looks really good. The trailer actually looks pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. It looks really, really good. Uh, you know, Gal Gadot looks really good as the uh, Wicked Queen. I'm sure she'll look good when she goes through the transformation to be the old hag. Uh, Rachel Zellwig uh, looks really good as Snow White. Uh, the prince, we do see the prince in there, and the dwarfs, they look actually pretty good. They might be a little different in style, like I think one of them, you know, because all the dwarfs are supposed to have like white beards, or at least grayish white beards in the original. It looks like they may have changed that up a little bit with some of them, but hopefully they keep their personality. You can definitely see in the trailer, uh, you do see Dopey in there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but again, we'll see exactly how, you know, how well they look when they get a full-on trailer later on uh, this year, if not into the Super Bowl next year, because I think we will get a trailer. We will get a trailer, a full trailer. The first full trailer we'll get probably by the end of this year, and I think we'll get a, a second trailer, second final trailer around the Super Bowl. Or well, actually, actually, now that I think about it, we might get the first full-on trailer around the Super Bowl, and then we might get the second trailer, second and final trailer, maybe... Uh, a month before or something like that because the movie um, is scheduled uh, for, for you know for release March 21st 2025 so that's why I'm thinking we might get you know the first full trailer you know with a better look at all the characters and everything like the dwarves and Snow White and the Wicked Queen and all that and a better idea of how this adapta adaptation is going to go or this live action remake is going to go um I think we'll get that first one possibly around the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, mostly Thanksgiving. And then I think we might get another one around Super Bowl time, which I think would be the final trailer to, you know, really suck us in. But if not, then I expect, if, but if not, then I expect around Super Bowl time, we'll get the first full trailer. And then maybe around Valentine's, well, I wouldn't say Valentine's, but I would say maybe at the beginning of March, we'll get the final trailer. So that's just my my assumption and everything. And uh, according to them, they said another highly anticipated live action Disney remake. I uh, will see Richard Zellweger at Snow White. Um, she came out, talked about the movie. Says the teaser footage comes with a familiar, to uh, the teaser footage comes with familiar tunes and seven familiar faces. Also revealing Gal Gadot, who was also there along with Rachel to talk about the movie. Uh, to see her take on the Evil Queen. You can see the new footage above. Again, they provided a link. You go to IGN or any outlet, comicbook.com and everything. You can click on the link. You can see it there. Uh, you, but basically, the movie they say the movie is going to come to theaters March 21st, 2025. So again, so again, my, my, thought, my thought process on this from, you know, because they're saying this is a teaser. I don't know what qualifies for a teaser anymore, but I think the first full-on trailer where you'll get, like I say, you get more more of an idea of what's going to happen. I think we'll get that around the, at the late, at the earliest being the holidays, at the latest being Super Bowl, and then the final trailer, I would say, earliest being Super Bowl, latest being, you know, at the beginning of the month, it, you know, it's released in theaters. So we'll see. Then they talked about the third Tron movie, Tron Ares. Uh, the cast teams up with several exclu uh, teams up to reveal s exclusive footage in a collaboration with Nine Inch Nails. Yes, Nine Inch Nails, who got a logo, N-I-N, uh, presented for them on there. They'll be providing the music for Tron Ares. And they did have everybody come on stage, including Jared Leto, uh, J Jared Le Leto. I think Joe Leto, the guy that does Joker. You know, so that's pretty good. Uh, it says Jeff Bridges, Jared Leto, and more are warped into D23 to talk about how Tron Ares builds upon one of Disney's oldest live action movie franchises. Their time on stage didn't disappoint, and it brought a new look at technology at the 
a technological villain who wants to take over the real world. It says Tron Aries premieres in 2025. It'll include a soundtrack and composed by legendary industry rock outfit Nine Inch Nails. And the and what's interesting is according to the other parts of the synopsis, the Tron characters in cyberspace, in the cyberspace of Tron, will, you know, show up in the real world. They will come into the real world. We are gonna have a human character, a new character that's a human character that will show up in the real world. And the villain, the technological villain, is AI. Yeah, isn't that something? So yeah, that's what's happening there. So pretty cool. And then they ended it off by showing uh, the trailer for another trailer for Mufasa, the Lion King. Basically, it's like a full-on trailer and everything. They had the cast come out and perform Circle of Life. They showed, I think, the beginning. Pretty much of what the beginning of the movie is going to look like on the screen. It says Mufasa the Lion King, so that's pretty cool. And according to the synopsis, it says the Disney Entertainment Showcase ended its three hour run with a lengthy look at the Eidwark prequel Mufasa the Lion King. A new trailer for the movie teases the early days of a friendship between Mufasa and Scar, who, go, who is then known as Taka. Uh, as Rafiki recounts the early days of the future king, we hear new music arranged by Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda. Mufasa the Lion King will offer a new perspective on a classic Disney story when it comes to theaters December 20th of this year. And uh, it says that the two and a half minute trailer is now online. But so far, um, from what I can tell, uh, the first day of the D23, I'm assuming weekend event at the Honda, uh, the Honda Civic Center, at the Honda Center, I say, in Anaheim. Um, I thought, from what I saw online and the reaction, people like Campia and his brother Ray and others have said, uh, you know, have said and or have said and talked about, you know, through social media, YouTube and everything. I have to agree that they did a pretty good job here. They did a good job. There were some hits and misses, but, you know, the Marvel presentation could have been better. Uh, the Marvel presentation did have them show a little bit more about Captain America, uh, Captain America, Brave New World, and, you know, Harrison Ford being, you know, being Thunderbolt, President Thunderbolt Ross and becoming the Red Hulk. And yes, that will be Harrison Ford. And my finger just hit my phone there. Uh, that will be Harrison Ford's face on the Red Hulk because it's being motion captured. So that's going to be interesting. And we do find out that the celestial being um, that we see at the end of it, uh, Internals um, is where Antimantium is that's embedded in the Earth. That's where Antimantium is going to originate from in the, in, in the MCU. Yes, yeah, so the celestial being that you see at the end of it, uh, Internals, I think, that's where adamantium is going to come from because, you know, there's a character, I can't think of her name right now, that was, you know, uh, basically affected with that stuff uh, in the film. And I think she's also going to be playing a part in Captain America and Brave New World um, as well. But yeah, they did talk about that and that was about it. Uh, they had Ryan Reynolds come on screen, thank them for supporting Deadpool and Wolverine. And again, that was about it. That's all I can really say on the, as far as the Marvel thing goes, outside of the Agatha stuff and Daredevil Born Again and everything. Um, what's interesting is they used D23 here to, I think, give more emphasis on the stuff they didn't have time to give emphasis to during San Diego Comic-Con. They did talk about more about Fantastic Four for steps. They even had the cast you know, send a video message because they're filming the movie right now. And I think Pedro Pascal was in outfit was the only one in outfit so uh so yeah that was about that was about it for um the marvel stuff and then of course like i said the star wars stuff you know and everything you know skeleton crew man mandalorian go grogu and uh endor endora season two were the ones they talked about and everything else pretty good pixar good presentation you know disney flat out on its own pretty good presentation live action remix you know, for, for first time, pretty good um, as well. But um, 
That's all I can say on it, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are. You know, comment below, live chat during the premiere, if you haven't already. But let me know what you're looking forward to out of the announcements on day one of D23 from the Honda Civic Center in Anaheim, California. Let me know if you guys attended, you know, D23 day one, or if you're attending D23 weekend, let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you're looking forward to the most. Uh, today, they are going to be doing Marvel animation, and I think more Marvel outside of that. So it's going to be mostly all Marvel this today, but it's mostly focused on Marvel animation, maybe some Marvel live action. Then I don't know about tomorrow, we'll find out. Uh, but that's all I can really say. Good first day, Will you give me your thoughts. And uh, that's all, give me your thoughts, I'll hear what you have to say on it. Uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel, it really helps me out. Also, click on the link to my Teespring store. Get merchandise you can't get anywhere else there. So, let's click on the links as well to find my content in other places uh, online. But, guys, that's all I can say. D23 off to a hot start. And I think John Campy is right. I think San Diego Comic Con needs to take, uh, you know, needs to take a look at what Disney uh, Disney's doing with D23 here. Take a page out of that and basically apply it to next year and other future San Diego Comic Cons in the future and maybe move it out of the convention centers and play into places like let's say the basketball arena where the San Diego State uh, Aztecs play as well as you know the Petco Park and, and stuff but again let me know what your thoughts are let me know what you're looking forward to the most and I am out